Hi, welcome to our second online chapel with Mrs. Daly. Welcome. And I thought my office wasn't good enough for our second chapel. So we are doing chapel on location at Arabia Mountain. We have started in the book of Judges. And if you remember last week, I kind of gave you an overview. The whole point of Judges is when we disobey God, there are consequences. And we see that over and over again for the children of God, the Israelites. They're settled in their land. Now, their disobedience actually started back with Joshua. If you back up a little bit, Joshua, they're taken over the land of Israel. God said, get rid of everybody because I don't want them to influence you in a bad way. And they were, they got most everybody out, but there were a few groups that they left behind. Like they were like, you know, the Philistines, are they really going to be a big issue to us? You guys can just stay. It's no big deal. And so things that they thought were not a big deal in the time of Joshua end up being a very big deal because disobeying God always ends badly. There's always a consequence. And so now in the time of the judges, we're seeing that consequence that the other groups of people that didn't worship God started influencing the Jews and the Jews started worshiping these other gods. Well, we know we are to have no other God above God. God's to be the most important thing. And so for 400 years, we had this cycle happen seven times uh, in the time of the judges where the Jews would disobey God. God would send a group to come in and take over um, for a period of time and they'd finally get the point, turn to God, there'd be this big battle to get rid of the other uh, group of people, and then everything was hunky-dory dandy again, and then they would do it again. Now, we pick up our story with Deborah. Now, Deborah is actually the third judge, so that means there's two that we're skipping over, but I have to make mention of Ehud. Ehud was the second judge, and the reason I love Ehud, he's the only person in the Bible mentioned to be left-handed, and I am left-handed. And so this is your left-handed joke for the day. Everyone's born right-handed, only the gifted overcome it. Think about it. So there's Ehud, and the reason we know he was left-handed, because the way Judges puts it, is he reached over on his right side to grab his dagger, and he had to kill this king that they were trying to get rid of. So after he, Ehud dies, Deborah, we pick up with Deborah. Now, this is unique because, first of all, Deborah's a woman. She's the only woman judge. And that is a big deal in biblical culture back in that time. It's not like it is today. In Bible times, women were not respected. They were just things. They were not allowed to be leaders. But here we have, in the time of the judges, after Yehud dies, Deborah is a prophetess. And what that means is God spoke to her and she spoke to God's people. And she actually would meet under this, they called it the Deborah palm tree. She'd meet under this palm tree and people would come to her and the Bible says that she would judge them. Now that doesn't mean she was like, I can't believe you wore that. Mm, that's just nasty. You know, nothing like that. It wasn't like she was judging people in a bad way. Her judging people was showing them their sin and bringing them back into a relationship with God. And we don't know how long she did this before God spoke to her and said, we need to raise up a judge. It is time to get rid of the people who had taken over. So for the third time, the Jews have done evil in the sight of the Lord. And God has allowed a Canaan king named Jabin to come in and take over a couple of cities in Israel. And for 20 years, Jabin is horrible to the Jews. And finally, the Jews are getting the point. Now, Jabin has a very powerful commander of his army, Sisera. And the Bible says that they had a beastly army. They had 900 chariots of iron. And nobody's going to want to go against these guys. Deborah's doing her thing. And after 20 years, God tells Deborah, it is time to raise up a judge. And so Deborah sends out for Barak. Apparently, we can kind of guess, maybe he was a great military guy, but God called him to be the next judge. Okay, as I'm walking, I realize we have thrown a lot of names out there. So, I want you to remember, Deborah, Barak, good guys. Jabin, Sisera, bad guys. 
And at the end of the story, Jael ends up being a good guy or girl as the term may go. So God calls Barak to be the next judge. So he comes to Deborah and Deborah lays out the plan and says, God has got this all figured out. We're gonna go set up on Mount Tabor. See the connection there, location meant something. We're gonna set up on Mount Tabor and we are gonna draw out Sisera and his army. And when he gets to the river of Kishon, that is when you are going to go and kill Sisera. Because if you kill Sisera, the commander of the army, the army's not gonna know what to do. But that is where the battle is going to happen. So God has it all planned out. All Barak has to do is obey. But it's very interesting. Barak says, I'm only gonna go if you go with me. So it's not really clear in scripture why Barak was afraid to go into battle without Deborah there. We do know that because he didn't want to go without Deborah, a woman would be remembered for winning this battle. So I tend to think that it was because he was afraid. And that happens sometimes. We're afraid to do the things that God has so clearly laid out because we can't see how it happens. And we're just afraid to take that step of faith. Deborah doesn't make fun of him. Deborah doesn't call him a big chicken pants. She goes, I'm going to go with you. And they go and call 10,000 of the Jews to go to battle with this beastly army led by Sisera, a very scary commander. So Deborah and Barak get to the top of the mountain and they see Sisera and his army with no fear. They go running down and go to battle with this beastly army. They took everybody out, except for the commander of the army. Now, I remember Sisera's name because he's really a big sissy. In the midst of battle, he takes off, leaves his chariot, and runs and hides. Sisera runs from the battle and he finds a nearby family that is friends of Jabin, but they're not really a part of Jabin's kingdom. And he gets to their tent. Now I couldn't find a tent, so I found this random old house that's left in the woods out here in Arabia Mountain. But he gets there and his friend's not there, but his friend's wife is there, Jael. Now remember that name, Jael. He gets there and says, look, can you please let me hide in your tent? Hide and stand guard for me. And if anybody comes looking for me, tell them that I am not here. Could you please give me something to drink? And so she lets him in the tent. She covers him up, gives him some drink, and he goes to sleep. Well, Jail, it's interesting. All we can assume is she had heard about Israel and Israel's one true God. And she did not want to be on the wrong side of this battle. So she actually takes a tent peg, you know, the big, huge tent pegs. And I'm just going to put this gently. She got rid of Sisera. And so we see at the end that Jael is remembered and is held up as getting rid of Sisera, the commander of the army. Yeah. Deborah told Barak, I'll go with you but a woman is going to be remembered for winning this battle. And that woman was Jael. As we come to the end of this lesson, remember the overall point of judges. When you disobey God, there are consequences. And we see that over and over again. We see that with the battle um, with, of Deborah and uh, Barak. There was consequences for their sin but this is the cool thing that we see. The Jews had turned away from God. Did God just go, forget you guys, I'm gonna go find a new group of people? No, he disciplined them. He let somebody else come in and treat them badly. He allowed a bad thing to happen to get their attention. 
but it wasn't to get to them or to punish them going, see, this is what you get when you disobey me. No, his whole purpose was bringing his people back to himself. And guys, that's something we see in our own life is when we disobey, you've got to know when you disobey God, there's going to be consequences. It's just the way it is. But he's not allowing it or doing it out of meanness or getting at you. His whole goal always is, always is to bring you back to himself. God is a God of second chances. He's not going to give up on you. Now, it doesn't mean that we can just go sin and go, God's going to give me another chance. No, I mean, that's a really tough life. And you see that in the time of the, of the judges. It was a really tough time because of their own sin. They caused their own difficulties and own trials. But God did give them a second chance. So we want to learn from that. We first of all want to question, what are the things that I keep getting in trouble for? Because teachers and parents, um, principals, we, we don't discipline you because we're mean and because we're mad at you. We're modeling what God did. We discipline you to bring you back to a right way of living. And that was God's point in the time of the judges. Now, I do want to bring down some some little things that we can learn from this very specific story of Deborah and Barak. It's a very unusual thing because you've got a woman that is hearing from God. And then you've got a man, Barak, who is this military leader. And in this time where it's girls are better than boys, you know, girls are got cuties, boys are dumb, you know, and, and we're at each other trying to prove who's better. And I think what we see with Deborah and Barak, even though Barak was afraid to trust God, he wanted Deborah with him. Um, and, and there's a consequence for him not trusting God, is that a woman will be remembered for really winning this battle. Um, but what we see is Deborah has a role and Barak has a role. And they did. there was no competition of who's in charge. There was no competition of who was better. Um, they each had their role, they each had their gifts, and they come together as a team to accomplish God's goal. And that is something that we can learn. Girls are different than guys. We have different gifts. We have different things that, you know, girls are good at, the guys are good at typically. Um, but we can learn from that of it isn't a competition. God wants his unique creation of girls and his unique creation of guys to work together to do something awesome for God. So lessons to take away for today. First of all, what do you keep getting in trouble for? What is your reoccurring sin cycle? Because we all have one. And what do you need to do to stop doing that? Obviously we need God's help. Second thing I want you to take away, working together to accomplish something for God. We all have different gifts. We all have different talents, guys and girls. And it's God's desire that we come together as a team with our different gifts and do something great for him. Little brother. So let's <laughs> we don't see Deborah coming in and I'm in charge. I like the Hulk. No, Deborah comes in and works with a fellow Israelite to free the people of Israel from Jabin and his army. So, until next week, I hope you guys have a good week, and I do want to leave you guys with a virtual high five.